Hi folks, so we're back with the class 31 again and today's mission is to change these two 10 amp circuit breakers which are far too small for two 32 amp circuit breakers which again may prove to be too small but I'm hoping they'll last long enough to try and find out with this clip on ammeter what current these motors are taking out of these batteries so that I can find out what size circuit breaker I do actually need. So these two circuit breakers that I'm intending to put in today are again AC circuit breakers and basically they're not the best option for operating a DC machine which this is working from the DC batteries. A DC current is a direct current that's going like that with a direct voltage behind it pushing it along. An AC current is being pushed along like that but it's being pushed by a sinusoidal waveform and in the middle of that sinusoidal waveform is when these operate at their best because there's really no current flowing because the voltage is zero and then it's going back the other way so a DC circuit breaker has apparently got a magnet inside it because what these do the circuit breaker is just a switch and inside there are a couple of contacts and when it detects too much current flowing it will open the contacts and on an AC circuit because it's going like that the voltage there's a null point in the middle so when this tries to break like that there's an arc formed between the two contacts as they open and on an AC circuit with the sinusoidal waveform going up and down there's a null point in the middle when there's no voltage so any arc that is being generated there will extinguish because there's no voltage and no current flow but on the DC side of it what happens is the voltage is constant all the time and so when the arc when that switch opens the arc is formed but there's no difference in voltage at which point the arc will be extinguished it will just continue to flow so as it tries to open in a DC circuit breaker there's apparently a magnet that will pull the arc away thereby extinguishing it between the two contacts as they try to open that's the difference I understand So these are the two 10 amp circuit breakers which I'm going to replace for these two 32 amp circuit breakers. So we'll get that done now. So that's the two 32 amp circuit breakers fitted. Now we'll reconnect the batteries and see how we go on. So we've currently got three empty coaches attached to the loco now. And what we're going to do, we're going to have a run around and see what this clip on ammeter hopefully reads. You can see that. But hopefully I should be able to pick a maximum and minimum figure up when, uh, when I return by scrolling through the mechanism on this itself. So I'm going to consider, first of all, the main current going into the controller from the batteries that will give us a total current these two circuit breakers appear to be in series so it uh, it doesn't really matter they're both taking the same current effectively so we'll see
So it's awkward to see with this clip on ammeter what's happening at the best of times, even without the sun, etc., and reflections. But what we've found is that currently pulling three empty coaches, we're getting a maximum of 24 amps through this main cable. What I'm going to try and do now is find out how much current is actually going through each of the motors because I know that two of the motors are running slightly warm and two are running cold. So we'll uh, have a, a few more laps and try and find out what current each of the motors are taking and um, see where we go from there. Catch you when we get back. So again, we've gone a bit further now and we're noting that one of the motors on this rear bogey is pulling something between four and a maximum of 10. It's, it's sort of averaging four, five amps and I've seen it go up to 10, 9.8 actually. Um, the other motor doesn't seem to be pulling any current at all. And when I'm, view when I'm holding the loco stationary and viewing what's going on with the, um, the wheel there, the drive wheel, that drive wheel is no longer actually trying to turn. So I'll have to take this body off and have a look and see what's happened to that. It might be the one that we put the Loctite on that plastic, on that steel shaft that's driving the plastic cogwheel, or maybe something's happened to the cogwheel. So I'll have to find out whether that motor is actually trying to turn or not. But it's not drawing any current at the moment. So I'm going to do the front bogey now and see where we go from there. So we finally got the last motor running. It seems there's a, a loose connection on the motor, but I think it's down at the motor itself. It's not really in this block here, which I was hoping it would be. And it's not on the top side here. I think it's down in the motor where the problem lies. So I've got that to address. But we were taking about three to nine amps on that one. Nine on start and three when it was running. So I'll have to look at the motor itself further down underneath this chassis plate and um, try and find out where the faulty connection is there. Uh, this one's re-drilling and re-bushing with some kind of a grommeting material. But at least all four motors do seem to be running, even if two are running hot. So we'll just see how we go on with it. I think it could probably do with more weight in the chassis itself. We've got the horns running. They're not very pretty horns, but a sound card hopefully later on will uh, replace those. Bit of a mess at the moment, it all wants tidying up and rewiring as such. But let's try and get it functioning first. Find out what the issues are and then try and address the issues. So the loco is currently loaded back into the car, ready for going home for uh, minor alterations doing on various bits and pieces, notably the buffer that was bent and just a bit of tidying up on the connections and the wiring and we'll see how we go from there. Uh, I'm going to modify some kind of a board to hopefully strap it onto such that I can take it to Wigan for their open day and see how it runs there being as it's successfully gone round our track at Brighouse. 